<clears throat> so what's going on guys what's going on welcome back to hey hello world hope you all are having a good evening um so tonight will be really interesting we have uh corey teague who will be calling in shortly and we'll be talking about some cool things um in the meantime I am here eating some french fries. And you know what I like to eat with the french fries? Some cocktail sauce. Yes, the cocktail sauce that you put on shrimp and seafood. Mm -hmm. I just dip it in like it's ketchup and I just eat like that. How do you guys eat your french fries? Do you use a dipping sauce? Another favorite dipping sauce that I like to use is um ranch i'll use barbecue sauce um i haven't tried mayonnaise but i think a lot of people use mayonnaise to eat their french fries i don't think i'm interested in that at all but it was definitely something that i believe is an acquired taste <laughs> so anyway um how was your day uh my day was decent it was nice it had a nice little flow to it um, I enjoyed it. Um, I did a lot of research today on, um, you know, various things with the business. And I learned a whole lot. It was exciting. Um, if you are not subscribed to the channel, I suggest that you do. Make sure you hit the notification bell so that you will be able to uh, know when we go live. Also, I am going live every single day as much as I can possibly do so around between 7 and 9. Uh, more likely like 8.30, um, I would say would be the best time that you will see me on here. Um, so let's see what else. What else is going on? Um, let's see what else. Am I feeling down? Still, no. My spirits have, ra have risen a little. So I cannot complain about that. Um, let me see what else. Um, you like my quote in the back? I know I mentioned it a couple of weeks ago, but we can always investigate what it really means. Let's see, it says life takes you to many unexpected places. Love brings you home. I love that. Um, it says so many different things on so many different levels. Love is amazing, um, especially when you feel genuine love. And I'm not only just talking about from your spouse, I'm just saying genuine love altogether. That is amazing. Um, have any of you felt genuine love from anyone, even your family? Think about it. Do you feel like your family loves you? Do you feel like your husband or your wife, your boyfriend or your girlfriend loves you? Genuinely. I mean, like we we can pretend to love someone because they're great and cool and you feel like they expect you to love them. But do you have people in your life that really just gives you that feeling like, wow, they actually love me? Think about it. And do you believe that it's possible to love without conditions? Meaning, if you love someone and they break your heart, would you be able to still love them anyway? And it doesn't necessarily mean that you would... Um, have to fall in love romantically. I'm just saying like, uh, just in love with the whole fact like, wow, okay, maybe saying in love is a bad word to phrase it. Well, let's just say like that deep admiration. If you had deep admiration for someone, um, family, friend, whatever, and they disappointed you or they hurt you, would you still feel the same way? Depending on what they did. Right? Would you still feel the same way? Um, I think I could possibly do that. I, I think I can possibly, because I, I, I can drum up a few people in my head who have 
probably hurt me to the core. And if they came to me and said they wanted to possibly rekindle whatever the situation was, um, I think I would say, yeah. Would I have conditions? Would I go in it with reservations? Absolutely. Because with anything you should, with anything human nature, you should go with reservation. Ooh. Let's see who this is. Hey, guys. Hey, it's Corey. Hey, Corey. Hey, how's it going, Jeff? Good, good, good. All right. So. Yeah, I'm really glad to uh, have been able to get on the line tonight. Me too. Yeah, yeah, it's actually been hectic, but it's good to have good company. I know that's right. I, I, you can dialogue and um, bounce ideas off of and, um just to be in the presence of you. Even if you don't get to actually talk to each other every day, at least you can, you know, with social media, you can scroll and see. And I mean, it's it's nothing but inspiration on your um, Instagram um, account. That's where I go when I need when I need something to pick me up. I go right there. Oh wow! Thank you. Um, I said I appreciate that. Yep. I appreciate well, I'm that. I'm one of those um, silent, silent um, admirers from afar that just go there and they. Every time I need, like I said, every time I need some sort of inspiration, I go right there to scroll past. Wow, thank you. Yeah. Thank you. I appreciate it. Like, you know, the funny thing is sometimes I get these blocks where I just don't have anything to say or write. And then all of a sudden, some days I have like everything is spewing out and I have, and of course is when I'm driving, everything spews out okay. and then I have to like write it down on a piece of paper or something. <laughs> so how was your day? I'm doing pretty good today. Yeah, I'm actually um, just getting back from rehearsal. I have a show on Sunday. Okay. Doing a free concert. Yeah. Where is it? Just uh, in case people want to uh, know. Uh, Faith Temple in Jersey City. Oh, okay. Um, yeah, Faith Temple, uh, Ocean Avenue. Mm -hmm. so yeah, Faith Temple on Ocean Avenue. Um, and we're going to be there at 3.30. It's a free, free concert, I believe. I think the church is, you know, they, they're at the, you know, free will offering, but it's, there's no, like, there's no ticket. You don't have to buy a ticket to come. Okay. You know, Everybody hear uh, that? I might try to pass by. Yeah, different gospel groups. Um, I sing with a group called the Wings of Joy. Isn't that something? That's the name of our group? I know, right? <laughs> Wings of Joy. Yeah, that's the name of our group, the Wings of Joy. <laughs> and um, so uh, we're actually going to do a few songs, and then I'm with, I'm with a couple of groups. I also sing with a group from New York. As you know, we lost one of our members recently. Yeah, I saw the yeah, tribute yeah. earlier. Yeah, we went in we went in last night to do some songs, to have the service, and we actually marched in from the back like we were in the subway. Mm hmm Yeah. So we did, we went through the whole routine of how we would do it. Yeah, so uh, you know, it, I guess music is well it's never music is important. Uh, so but more more to the point of what I was mentioning to you before about the spiritual aspect of what they're doing um, would be the difference. And I, I wonder if people really understand and grasp, if they really grasp the understanding of how powerful your movement is, they wouldn't even worry about whatever you ask for in terms of monetary, uh -huh. that wouldn't even be an issue. You know what I mean? Because right. they know how powerful and impactful it is. You know. Um, I forgot, there's a scripture in the Bible that talks about putting on the whole armor of God, right? It sure does. And it, and, and it gets down to the part where having your feet dressed or shod with preparation, you know, with, with the, uh, what was the, uh, something to do with peace, having a shod with preparation of peace or, or having your feet adorned in a way that you can walk in peace. Mm. And it's kind of interesting that socks, that you do have socks in your, in wow, your Wow, yes, that's very and, true. That's true. Yeah. And the whole that, idea that, is... That's, that's you know, what's so funny, too, is because I said, we want to inspire you from head to toe. Yes, in the parallel. Yeah, that's true. Yeah, that's powerful stuff. So look down. Yeah, the breastplate of righteousness, the chest. Look down. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Wow. And, mm -hmm. and just the power, just the power of knowing that you can, um, like I said, you can be uh, blessed or you can be uplifted from even looking down. You know, most people think, 
they'll tell you, you know, look up, don't look down. With your ministry, you can look down and still be uplifted. You know, so that's, that's the ministry that, you know, one, one of the ideas that I'll share with you, and I know some people may listen in and, and take those ideas, so maybe I need to share that with you. But, maybe, you know, yeah, I'll say some of it openly. You know, you have cancer patients, right? Like children. Right. Thank you, and things like that. And I think that, the, that if there was a connection where we somehow could get some of your 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 material, your brand, into the hospital, especially where there's cancer wings with children. Mm-hmm. And inspirational messages, the ones that you have already on your face, I guess. And because, I don't know, I've been watching mm-hmm. the ministry, and mm-hmm. I follow a lot of different people on Instagram, on social media in general, but your ministry is something that we really need right now. There isn't enough inspiration in the world right now. If you, if you go out on the street anywhere, and, and what would you see? See people arguing, you'll see people depressed, you'll see people holding their head in their hand, you know. Uh, people, I've seen people just walk down the street, stop, talk on their phones, start screaming and crying. Wow. There's so much sadness and depression going on. Oh, speaking of depression, depression, mental illness, I mean, you saw what I experienced with my daughter. Yeah, how is she I mean, anyway? She's doing good now. She's doing very good now, much better. And, uh, you know, going there and seeing so many other children dealing with depression, dealing with depression, mean, there's so much um, chaos in the world. And, and the inspiration that, that that comes through your ministry is, of course, a business is something that you're grooming um, to one day hopefully be able to push the brand to a point where you don't even have to worry about working anymore. You know, of course, that's, that's, that's the ultimate goal. But there's also a spiritual component to it. Mm-hmm. So when people purchase your anything from your line or from your product, they're, they're helping your business. They're also expanding your ministry, too. Yeah, I know, so like, a lot of times with, um, like, when I'm at vending events, mm-hmm. The, sometimes some of the expressions and the emotions that come out of people. I know I tell the story a lot, but I have a t-shirt that says work hard, hard work pays off. And right. I will never forget it. This woman, she was actually, at, it was at a, a festival in one of these towns okay. and she started crying. I was like, why are you crying? And she said, I don't believe in it. I was like, why? She said, my husband works every day for the last 60 years and he never could get up, 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 up. And like, I just took that opportunity to like try to talk something, you know, some some hope into her. And, right. and you know, I don't know how she left, but she was, she was still crying, but I gave her a hug and I'm like, well, hopefully something oh, might help. You never know. You never know. Never know. So, like, I feel like it's very important that we say things to each other, purposeful, purposeful things to each other, because you don't know how it's going to affect somebody, positive or negative. You know? Hello? Oh, okay. I thought I lost you. I thought I lost you. But it's like, you know, these are the kind of situations that I run into at most of my events, you know? Right. And that has that happened to you when you came into Patterson at the, uh, I think it's Sustainable, the uh, Alliance of Sustainable, oh man, I can't even think of the last word of it. Yeah, that business program. I'm not right. sure because it, that, okay. there, was, there was a lot of background chatter going on. You know what I mean? Okay. Like there was the music, there was a lot of entertainment going on. So I'm not, I, I don't recall any situations where people were expressing okay. anything, but I do, um, know that the woman that was sitting next to me, she bought a shirt and, okay. you know, well, something that, next, something resonated with next, her. Hmm? Yes, yeah, so this is the next question I want to ask you. Um, how comfortable would you feel um, bringing, bringing some of your material or some of your, um, some, you know, your, your t-shirt to the side to, let's say, Times Square during the day, one day? You know, like pick a day. No, I wouldn't mind. Yeah. See, I wouldn't mind because okay. to me, that's intimate. You know, you, okay. you, you, you're you speaking to people uh, in an intimate level because right. people, that's what we need. Like, 
I keep on, I think I mentioned that in a few other videos, like where we need intimacy. And it's not just like romantic intimacy, it's just human intimacy, something that we've fallen off, fallen away from. It's kind of like how a mother shares intimate moments with her child when they're nursing. That's intimacy. And we just, ah. Uh. You must have read my, well, I don't know if you read my page, but I posted something about that the other day. Oh, okay. I said, just, I told the fellas, you have a lady just. Rubber feet. You don't have to always jump in the bed for the intimacy. Yeah, I you know? remember. I saw that sometimes, post. <laughs> yeah, sometimes she don't want to jump in the bed. Sometimes she just want to talk. Mm -hmm. You know? Because you have these guys that get so frustrated. But the, you got to understand some men, for the most part, are just physical beings. Mm -hmm. They're not really... You very seldom we find it. That's when you find a man that, that, that shows emotion. Like I do, it stands out because most men don't like to show emotion. Mm -hmm. You know, they think that it shows that they're weak, but they're really not. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. It's not. It's, it's actually takes strength to show emotion and to express yourself. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. It and, is. Um, that's what I. That's the reason why I was asking you: Would it be an issue for you to come out into the city? Because I meet so many people every day that are dealing with struggles, and I'm sure the material that you have would. And it also would unlock, it would unlock a door in your ministry, in your business that I believe would just, it would just take off. Yeah, I mean, like, and you know what, just possibly knowing how it can affect somebody positively, meaning like having uh -huh. that conversation with people, because somebody could be one step away from suicide, you know? Uh-huh. And and we don't know that necessarily. Well, actually, you wouldn't know that because someone who's really contemplating suicide is not going to blast from you know blast it out like, "Hey, I want to kill myself." No, They're just ready to go. Right. Right. So, yeah, I definitely um, I wouldn't mind doing that at all. I think that'd be cool. I think it just talking to people would be cool. Like if they purchase things, yeah. that'd be great too. But the whole idea of just helping someone that would be even better, right. you know. Yeah, because that's what I was, when I was, because I watch your, I'm, you know, you know I'm a big fan, I watch your show, mm -hmm. and I listen to how you, and the thing, the thing about you, from what I've gathered, that you really, you're really serious about what you're doing. I know there's a lot of folks out there that, let's just keep it real, they do it, they do it for the money, for what, you know, what they can make. Right. But when I hear you talk, I hear the passion and the drive. And the determination and the commitment that you really want to actually change lives. That you're not, you want to make money, but you don't sit here in front now. You want to, we all are making a living. We're all trying to survive. That, we're not going to, we're not even going to talk about that. Right. But you, in addition to that, more importantly, you actually want to change lives. That's what I pick up when I watch your, your, um, your webcast, you know, each night. Mm -hmm. And you're even trying to find different topics that, you know, contribute to changing lives. And then I watch the fitness part. Somehow, I don't know, somehow I get ideas and so I, I said, somehow she could even probably create a line of, let's say, tank tops for the gym. Yeah, I do have tank you know, tops. <laughs> oh, you do? Yeah. Oh, okay. it, you probably didn't see it that day because it was probably cold. I probably didn't. It was probably okay. cold and I didn't have them out, but I have, I have okay. tank tops, I have hoodies, okay. onesies. Okay. But yeah, I started actually started off with t-shirts and then tank tops. Okay. Mm -hmm. See, you know what? I think when you came the last time, it was in the winter time. Yep. So you didn't have those. Okay, I get it now. Or if it was, it was probably yeah. folded on the table where, like, you know, okay. you probably couldn't see it. But I, I, I probably didn't have it out. Mm -mm. But I do. Okay. I do have tank tops. Um, yeah. I'm probably gonna bring it this weekend. Um, okay. To that event, so because it's getting warmer. It is. Sorry about that. That's the church bell in the background. Oh. <laughs> um, yeah. Uh, what was I going to say? On, okay, now, Saturday. I know it's usually pretty noisy inside, mm -hmm. but I'm trying, to, I'm trying to see if I can do a lot. You know what? Inside that particular location, I know sometimes that Wi-Fi is the best. Mm -hmm. So I might just shoot a video, you know, around the table, the people coming up to the table, talking to you, things like that. Yeah, that's fine. So I really, fine. Yeah, I really want to help with the marketing. Um, the branding is already there. You don't need any help with the brand. The branding is there. You just, all you need now is just a couple of folks to get around. You know, like the book of, what's that, Nehemiah, when they said, so they built the wall. Mm -hmm. People had a mind to work. Right. That's all you need now. You just need a few people that have a mind to work and not just work, but work your vision. You know, not mm -hmm. to bring 
Because then even if they do have some ideas, those ideas need to line up with the vision that God gave you. Right, right, right. You know, and that's I think that's all it's going to really take at this point. Because I remember the other day you were contemplating, you, were, you know, questioning as to whether or not to give it up. Yeah, just, yeah I'm not even yeah. gonna lie. I'm not I, even gonna lie. I was watching it, and I said, no, no, I'm, I'm not, I'm not going to have that. I'm not going to lie. I'd be like, it's true. I did. Yeah. There's been plenty of times where I'm like, you know, yeah. I, I'm not sure if I should just keep on. Because by business standards, you're supposed to be a certain area, you know? You're being supposed to be a certain um, stat, status by a certain time. And when yeah. you don't come near that, you think, yeah. And then you hear about then you hear about other things, situations where it's like, well, if you're really doing what you're supposed to do, then it will come. And I'm like, well, maybe I'm not doing what I'm supposed to do. It, it, it is sometimes back and forth, you know, back and forth with that. Yeah, well, that's that's why I say, you know, it's good. The weather's breaking. Uh, we're going to be able to push. I'm going to help push this. You know, I, I'm, I'm going to go and get the permit myself for, the, for New York. Because you have tourists there. You have people all over the world mm-hmm. that will, you have, especially, let's say, for instance, 125th Street, mm-hmm. you know, Adam Frame Power Boulevard, right there in Harlem, you know, you have people with fans there all the time that get, they get flanked by people from all over the world mm-hmm. who are just happy and excited to be in Harlem and to be able to buy items in Harlem so that they can say, they were in oh, Harlem. 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 Yeah. <laughs> so it's time for you to have a stand in Harlem. Yeah. Get you a stand. I think it's fifty bucks, and okay. they give you a permit. You know, and you're you know you're just responsible for setting it up however you want to do it, and definitely have people to help you do that. And you'll be surprised how people will come there and buy buy your your product simply because you're in Harlem. And they want to say, I was in Harlem, I traveled to New York, I went to Harlem, and look what I bought. Mm -hmm. I bought some some, some t-shirts and things with very, very powerful inspirational messages on them. And not only that, they know, not only that, they'll understand what the meaning and the the power by, and also too, like, I physically make them, so they're getting a piece of my energy with them, you know? Exactly. Yeah, so I... The piece of two is each and every item. Yeah, so I try I try my best... I try my best to be as positive as possible. It doesn't always work out. And I try, I tell people that all the time because I just want to remind everybody we're all human and so am I. And I mess up. I mess up times. I mess up, um, you know, with things. Um, I mess up with people. But at the end of the day, I try I try to go back and rectify the situation, whatever it is. If, if I hurt somebody. Have those we have to learn this and that. Yeah. And like but, a lot of people think that it's okay just to hurt people and be like, oh, well, whatever. Mm-hmm. But it's like, no, mm-hmm. you have, you're starting to put more scars on people. Like, you know, people, right. people may see flesh scars, but that soul mm-hmm. scar, you know how many people mm-hmm. walking around with like ripped up, ripped up souls right now? Like mm-hmm. it, there's so many people walking around with ripped up souls and souls that are like on the brink of yes. just breaking down and, and nobody sees that, but I see it though. I see it. I can look at somebody's face and see it. And I'm just like, just, I feel so terrible. I just want to go yeah. and help them and do whatever I can do just to help them make that one moment, even if it's for five minutes, just be better. You know? Yes, you're able to. I don't like using the word six six so that people say, oh, you're delving into, you know, evil. But some people have that extra ability to be able to sense the feelings and most of the people that are around them. Mm-hmm. People have that ability. I have friends who, I have friends who, even myself, you go, they go to the supermarket, and they sound funny. They go to the supermarket when they know that hardly nobody's there. Right. Because when they're there, they pick up all everything. Wow. Wow. So they have to go when it's empty, first thing in the morning or just before they close. Because they know if they're standing in line, and they'll feel the sorrow of the person in front of them. They'll mm. start crying. Because they can feel the sorrow of the person standing right in front of them in line. Mm-hmm. You know. And so it, it affects them so much that they just don't like being in crowds. They're, they love people, but they can't be... They can't handle it. Much. Yeah. They, they have to build everything. that up, though. But see, that's a blessing. Mm-hmm. You know, I think for people that have that gift, mm-hmm. it's a blessing that you need mm-hmm. to, like... 
give to others. You know what I mean? Because right. it's like you're there at that moment for the right reason. Because it's like everything we do is a trickling effect to other people. So like if I help, so let's just say if that person helped the person in line, they turn right. around and now their day has gotten a little brighter. They're not going to go home and do whatever they were going to do. Maybe not to themselves, but to other people that live in a household. You never know. So it's like, yeah, like you don't yep. want to deal with it. But at the same time, that's what you're birthed to do, you know? So, like, they just have to get stronger. I mean, we don't get, we don't have gifts for no reason. That's right. We don't. And, 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 but we have them to serve a purpose. Yep. And, like I was saying, I was, I was beginning to, I was watching your video, and as I said, at some point, it began to feel like this thing. Should I just go back to a regular full time job, or should I just, should I stay with this full time and leave the regular? You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. Like, it's, and contemplating. And I said, I don't feel like you're at crossroads with this, but I want to be encouraged to keep pushing. This is something that's needed. You know, I'm, you. I'm serious, especially right now. I appreciate um, it because it's, it's definitely encouragement that I need. You know, it's definitely yeah. encouragement that I need. And, you know, it's yeah, definitely I mean, encouragement I, that I need. Trust me. <laughs> okay. Yeah, because I don't want to see. What, what you have right now is something that. And I mean, to save lives, I mean that quite literally. I don't need to do it in the religious sense. I mean it quite literally. Like, preventing mm -hmm. someone from, you know, ending their life. You know, so. I'm glad I could be a tool, you know? You know? Yeah, I mean, so. What's up, It's my son. Well, tell everybody how they can find you and about your activism. Okay, um. If you'd like to find out my information on Instagram, I think it's Pastor D. But you don't have to call me. You can call me Corey when you see me. Mm -hmm. You know, I think that's just the way I have it on my Instagram. But um, I've been trying to assist the family lately, and this is probably one of the most difficult cases I've ever had. Because usually I'm fighting and advocating on behalf of our people not to hurt and harm and kill our people. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. I mean, killing anybody is wrong, but we know within the black community there's a serious issue mm -hmm. with that. But, you know, this particular case is involving police, and we know there's an issue with that as well. Mm -hmm. So it's difficult. If I have family that are, that are retired police officers, you know, I have an uncle who's a retired NYPD uh, detective, one of the first uh, black New York City police officers to ever get elevated uh, to, you know, a higher rank than just, you know, a street officer. Okay. Um, so, I, you know, I know that all police are bad, but there are some that are, and those that are, are terrible. There's like no medium there. It's either they're good or they're bad. Why do you think and that is? I don't know. Some of them, some of them Genuinely want to serve that community, mm -hmm. and those I commend. You can you can tell the ones who genuinely want to serve their community. They're not in it for anything. Well, you know, of course they want to take care of their family as well, but you can tell they really want to serve. And then you have those who don't even live in the town that they're you know they swore they they took the oath to actually be in, and they don't care about that particular community. You know, they just they just want to show up. Get their check, go home. You know. You think? And I, mean, I think that's in every field. You have teachers like that. Um, you have even ministers like that who don't live in the town that they that the church they pastor mm -hmm. is in the city that they don't live in. Because we have some right here in Patterson. They don't live here, but the church is here. Mm -hmm. So they don't have the empathy and the compassion. You know, not because they're a bad person, but it's just they don't live here. They live in predominantly wealthy neighborhoods and affluent areas in Bergen County, things like that, mm -hmm. Hudson County. And they come to Patterson, but it, I think it's a different ballgame if you live in the city that you're the pastor in. And you're there and you have the ability to work in your community. So that's what I do. So it's not like I'm here as an activist in the past, but I lived in some, you know, places 
big houses and green grass and white picket fences. Mm-hmm. I live in the community that I serve. And so, then another thing, I don't have a car, I don't drive. So, that gives me the opportunity to literally walk with the people, talk with the people, communicate with the community. So, when I go to the microphone at a council meeting and I start putting information out there and the concerns of the community, even some of the council people are baffled. Mm. Because they don't know. The community <laughs> Yeah, exactly. Because you're not out here. You're not walking these streets. Driving around. The only time you come out here is to knock on doors when you're running for re-election or election. You know? Other than that, and you'll have people that say it, and it's so sad. People will tell me that all the time. That, I mean, I don't want to single anybody out, but they'll say certain elected officials in the city, they never see them. But once every four years or once every three years. <laughs> yeah, like literally. That's all that's the only time you see it. <laughs> me, the everyday thing. So when I'm, whatever I post on social media, whatever I say at the mic, I can say in the street because I want, that's what I tell people, I don't need to see a council meeting and I'm railing against the police, crooked police officers, I don't go downstairs and hop in the SUV and go, I walk home. Mm-hmm. I walk home because, you know, I don't have fear. When, you, when you're righteous and you're serving God from your heart, you don't have fear. I mean, whatever's going to happen is going to happen. You know, but when you get lost in, in God and you say, look, I'm I'm here to do your work. Whatever happens, happens. You know, but at least you know, you, you, if anything happens and you're doing God's work, you know, you know what's going anyway. And you're working from your heart, you know what's going to happen anyway. So that's why I don't have any fear because I'm not, I know that, but you know God has your life in his hand. And whatever's going to happen, you know where, where you're going. You know you're going to, you know, be rewarded for the work that you've done. It doesn't bother you anymore. You know what I mean? Because mm-hmm, mm-hmm. I've had people fall and inbox me with, you know, be careful and this could happen and that could happen because of how how hard I've been going for the young man and his family. Who, well, by the way, if you go on my Instagram, you'll see it. You know, he was pretty much, he went to, to the police headquarters seeking help, you know, seeking water. He was already afraid because he had already been in a scuffle with some police officers outside of the precinct oh, that he was no. at. Mm-hmm. And he went in there. He, he re- what he wanted was help and some protection. And he didn't get either. I saw the footage. They were just standing around. Yes, exactly. Mm. And, and my take on that is I don't even think they believe that he was recording, much less live streaming. Mm. Because he was saying that he took too much ecstasy, which my thing, you know, my my thought process on that was, I believe he was trying to see if he could be taken to a place that he could be secured. We don't have to be afraid of them trying to harm him, you know? Right. Because he spelled out everything. Somebody be that high. I mean, first of all, that many pills, you wouldn't have to set it up to go live, flip the camera back and forth. You know where you're at. You know what's going on and who's doing what and why they want to do what they want to do. He spelled everything out. He didn't, you know, go off on the tangent. He knew exactly what was going on, but I think they didn't realize that he was live streaming. You know, so... And that's another thing. I, that's why I tell people, make sure you have your phone out. It's scary. When you watch it, like you said, you've seen it. It's scary. Yeah. Because throughout the entire video, you said they're trying to kill me. They think that I'm messing with the police. And then we show the article where two months ago, five police officers were nabbed by the FBI for drug-related, you know, drug-related um, crimes. So they were taking money from people and, and things of that nature. So he knew what he was talking about. He knew. And then that's what the people were saying, why was he sweating so much? Just imagine if you know your life is in danger. And you were right in the presence of the people that you know are trying to kill you. When you be sweating, when you be, because when you, you know, when your gentleman be racing, yeah, you know, you're mm-hmm. gonna sit there calm and collected. When you know the people standing right behind you are ready to kill you the minute you put your phone down. Mm. And, and the most scariest part was at the end of his live video. Before he turned his live video off, he said, "Okay, officer, you can kill me now." Ah, uh. 
He did say yes. Yeah, he said that in the video. Towards the end. Okay, officer, because it's still on his page. They weren't even able to erase it. It's still on his Facebook page. That's crazy. At the end of that video, he says, okay, you have to kill me now. And that's exactly what happened. Okay? And just the quiet and the silence from the city government, the mayor's office, the council, and of course, the police department, only bears witness to what that young man was saying on his live video, that they wanted to get him. You know, and that's the reason why I'm still fighting for him. I'm not going to fight for somebody that I know is wrong and got arrested for doing wrong, you know, or something like that. But mm -hmm. the young man wasn't apprehended. He wasn't detained. None of that. He went there because he was scared for his life. Quite frankly, quite literally, he's scared for his life. And he went there because he felt like he could get some help from them and some sort of protection. He figured that they wouldn't be crazy enough to harm him right there in their own headquarters. Oh, of course they would. Oh, yeah. See? You know how many people get robbed in plain daylight? Okay. Hmm. Okay. But he was hoping that perhaps they would, you know, see that it's at the headquarters and not bother. You know, ask yourself why when they took him to the ER, he was unresponsive. They took his cell phone. Now, he wasn't under arrest. He wasn't under investigation. Why'd they confiscate his cell phone? He wasn't detained. Nothing. Didn't break any laws. Nothing. And they, but they found it necessary to take his cell phone and then remove the cameras from across the street from the police department. Okay? They did that before they began the investigation. They took all the cameras. Okay? So, I mean, it's scary because you don't have enough leaders in the community that are willing to stand up and fight for families. That goes through things like that. <clears throat> but people don't realize the more you all stand together, the uh -huh. less likely stuff like this can happen. It's kind of uh -huh. like Absolutely. what they're saying. Like, yeah, you should snitch on people if um, they're right. doing something wrong. Don't take to any. Don't take anybody's uh, police time just because you want to be like, I don't want to be a snitch. Forget that. Yeah, you're not being a snitch when you're, when you're reporting something that you see. Is the, you know, and you're then you're making it known that you're seeing something happening that is potentially harmful to someone. Because I said, okay, today was them to mark a few. Exactly. And I'm sure if you were in that situation, you would want everybody helping you, you know, to protect you. Exactly. You no. Know? Yeah. You know, and then you know after that particular incident, I think you know, it, it, I think this particular incident changed a lot in terms of the views about just what we're here for. That's why I was saying to you about that the ministry you have, trust me, there's a purpose for that. Mm. Don't ever walk away from it. That's what I had to tell myself. Because I'm telling you, I used to be, I was a school board member at one time, in fact, 2012 to 2016. And I tried to run for re-election, right? 2016, I don't know, 2015 again. And didn't make it, ran again. 2016 didn't make it. And I said to myself, I wasn't going to be Bob O'Patterson. They don't, they don't see leaders and the work that we do. And then I had to realize that if I'm only doing this for recognition, for getting elected, then I'm not doing it for the right reason anyway. Well, think about it. So, if you did get elected, you wouldn't be able to fight for this particular case. True. That's the other thing. Absolutely. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. Absolutely. There's no way they would have let me. They would have had all kinds, of, I'm sure there's all kinds of rules and laws that prohibit oh, yeah. elected officials from, yeah. <laughs> I have a thing, like I have a thing, it's called once you're in a, once you're in a, you know, C-U-L-T, you got to uh -huh. abide by their rules and we're all, uh -huh. we're all a part of something, <laughs> uh -huh. willingly and unwillingly, you just have to understand uh -huh. what you're a part of. <laughs> That's exactly right. That's why I didn't accept, I mean, you know, school district. School district offered me a position. Mm -hmm. Okay, but then when I really began to analyze the position and really began to look at how much they were paying, I uh, and, and, you know for the, for what they were going to pay me, I would have had I would have spent all of that just taking Ubers around to visit you know the family. Wow! But despite that, no matter what the cost was, had I taken that position. I wouldn't have been able to fight for the family either. Because right. they would have used that. There isn't one person that works in the school district 
that is publicly on Facebook saying justice for Jamaica. Not one. Mm. They're, 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 they, they inbox me. They say, I'm, thank you so much for standing up. I wish I could, but my profession doesn't permit me to do that. It's true. Yeah. And there's a teacher that I know that I'm very cool with, you know, school guidance counselor, even the principal. And she said, you know, she wished that she could, you know, she could put her two cents in and comment and things like that, but her job would be in jeopardy if she did. Mm-hmm. You know, so... I think you're right. I mean, if I was in many of those positions or any of that, any of those things, I would. There was no way I'd be able to stand up and fight for the seven. You know, I would just have to sit there stoic the way they were. I don't know if you saw that clip that I saw. I did. I did see it. Yeah, I did yeah. see it. Don't think. Mm-hmm. I did see it, and I, a few of them, them. A few of them I did see at the. Um, um, a few of them I did see before November. Um, they were at okay. the event. You were there too. That's the same day I met you yeah, when you got the socks. Yeah, they were all there. Uh-huh. Uh-huh. Mm-hmm. Yeah, they actually were. You're right. I didn't know yeah. it was an election either. I just thought that, oh, wow, there's a bunch of people coming. Then I realized oh, what no. it was. Oh, wow. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. But that's that good, though. It's, a, it's good, though, because not every... I will say this, though, in um, a positive note. The elected yeah. officials, they actually supported me. And, you know, some of them supported uh, oh. a few, a few, a few items. You know what I mean? Like in, in the town in Jersey city, the elected officials yeah. come out and they say, this is great, but they're not really putting too much back into the small business at that time. Right. I mean, they probably support uh, other things. You know, I'm not, I'm not saying that's a bad thing. I'm not saying it's a good thing. No. I'm just saying that uh-huh. I did notice when I was in Patterson, they were supporting, right. and I really appreciated that. I I, I was like, wow, this is good because not every not every city uh, or county is like that. Mm-hmm. They, you know, they'll shake your hand and then you know keep it moving. In a heartbeat. Right. Right. But they actually in, they actually engaged, um, and they didn't know who I was. They probably assumed that I was a small business in Patterson. I, I don't know, but they engaged. We had conversation and, you know, they supported and I, I felt good. Right. Wow. Well, I'm definitely going to support Saturday. I'll definitely be out there. Um, you're going to have socks this year, right? Oh, yeah. I have a few new yeah. ones that I have. Oh, yeah. I will be there. <laughs> yeah, I have I a few there, new yeah. ones. I do even, I know you've probably seen that on my Instagram page. Sometimes I do silly videos too. I got friends that come through and so I need those socks anyway. They have a good, they have a good, what you call it, good designs and stuff on them. So that's perfect. <laughs> yep, that's perfect. And I'm going to encourage other folks, you know, to, but we have to, we have to support our own. Mm-hmm. You know, only, and I mean, those men have the way to do it. It's okay to share and encourage and hear sometimes. Exactly. So let somebody know that your business is important, that you're needed. You know, you know what I'm saying? And all of that is important. I mean, that's why, like I said, when I was when I was hearing the undertones of almost like you wanted to walk away from it, no, I have to find some kind of way to... Mm-hmm. That's how I started, like, commenting on everything and jumping in and I'm like, no, no, you can't. Oh, you know, okay. <laughs> don't have anything like that. If you walk away, that's, there's nothing else like that out here. Mm. You know? Yeah. Not where you're actually taking the time, because I think one day you mentioned about how your fingers were swollen from yep. working on the material and, and what have you. Yeah. So it's like you literally put everything dab into it. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Well, you know? And my dad, too, like, he helps a whole lot. <laughs> so <laughs> he's definitely a, a uh, a, a good supporter too when it comes to the company and like all of the he sold a lot of financial means into the company um he's sold a lot of his personal time into the company you know and and you know I, the company does what it can what it can to help him from time to time and you know it it's just you know, I want to get to a point where while he's still able and alive and able to move around and do all these things, for him to see the fruits of that labor. You know what I mean? 
Like every Absolutely. parent, every parent deserves to be um, taken care of by their child or children. No. They need to. Like, I think we need to, I think that's another thing we need to start teaching these, our kids too. Like it's, mm-hmm. it, it's, it's very important to give back to your parents and to love your parents because, you know, you guys sacrifice so much and I don't think a child realizes that until your adulthood. But if we start teaching them now, that also will bring the family unit back to what it used to be back in, you know, back in the day. Right. Absolutely. Um, I don't think that, um, I don't think that's being pushed enough. Like, you know, like you said, I mean, now, like, so hopefully, I'm praying too that, that the guy will, you know, be here long enough to see it, you know, come to fruition, mm-hmm. you know, from what you're really trying to. I mean, you know, there's, there's different ideas. Like, okay, for instance, um, having like, um, I know sometimes people say this is shallow, but. You'd be surprised if there's community leaders that you, if there's any community leaders in Jersey City or wherever you're at, you know, that, that you kind of look at as being, you know, a standout person within the community, you can have something called the Be, Be the Difference Awards. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. And have plaques made, have banking hall. You bring in uh, someone, even if it's an elected official, and they have a support base. All those people will buy tickets to come and support that person. Right. And at the end of the day, you'll be able to benefit from it as well. Right, for just yeah. people getting to know the company. And also saying yeah. thank you. You know, because a lot of people, a lot of things, a lot of times we forget how to say the simplest things like thank you or I appreciate mm-hmm. you. Like those are some things that, <laughs> that are getting written out of the vocabulary. <laughs> exactly. Yeah. And then it builds. Before you know it, that will be like the social event of the year. Like everybody will be working hard to hopefully get one of those awards one year. Mm-hmm. You know? Yeah. And it will build. You build from that and before you know it, you find a hall, you know, you let you talk to them, you work out a deal with them. I mean, I tell people those halls are not as expensive as people think. Mm-hmm. If you go in there and you tell them what you're working with, you just wanna have a simple brunch or a simple, you know, gathering. They can they can customize the menu to fit whatever budget you have. Right, and those halls need the the halls need money too. Like they, exactly. you know, <laughs> it's not everyday people are renting. That's advertising for them. Yeah, you know, it's not yeah. everyday people rent. So yeah, that's right. Yeah, they're not going to turn you in. They're going to figure out a way to create a budget to create to craft something a menu in an entire evening that will fit wherever you're at. So that come together beautifully. Yeah. And you'll be able to use some of that as seed money to continue growing, expanding. Yeah. It's time to I ain't gonna let you give up. I mean <laughs> Thank you. Yeah. You, yeah, I am yeah. And you see how I am when I go after people. I'm very Oh yeah. Oh, yeah, I'm not you quit. Yeah. You know, oh my squad, oh no. We don't it's bad enough we don't have enough of this as it is. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. Uh, we can't lose from the last few that's probably out here, really. I mean, in this region, I'm sure maybe in other parts of the country, but in this region, we don't have that. Mm. You know, and I'm in a city, I'm in New York City almost every day, and I don't see, you see all kinds of stuff, but you don't see that. Mm. You're actually encouraging people, and I know there's folks that would literally walk up and just start pulling stuff off the table and buying it, just mm. because of the mess that, that it brings. But you have people that are walking around, and you have some people that want some different stuff, but they want something different. Mm-hmm. But they want something with some with a message to it, but they don't know. You know, some people want to actually have a shirt or a pair of socks or any type of material or clothing, but they know that they can't go to the store and ask for just that one piece because it'd be so expensive, they would have to buy it in bulk. Right. And they know they could come to you and they could buy one or two without having to buy 50 or 60, which we're not going to discourage them from doing that either. Right. <laughs> yeah, if they want to do that, by all means. But, but you know what I mean? If they just decide that day they need something that they want to wear that's inspirational, they could come to you and get it. You know? Right. Yeah. Yeah, I'm going to put you. All right, I'm serious. Yeah, you know? Yeah, that's what we need to do. We need to do like a spot check. That's, you know, spot check is to push us into our purpose. You know what I mean? It's or, true. Or push us. Yeah. 
It's you know, true. Yeah. And, uh, yeah, I'm definitely going to do that. That's it. We can't, we can't afford to even walk away from this at all. There's too much, too much at stake, you know? There's way too much at stake, and there's too many people out there that really need to, that really need to hear the message that you're bringing. It's, it's, even, even those, okay, the videos that you report on YouTube, um, they should try to work on, um, actually advertising some of those, because those are powerful videos. Mm. And when I see people out here getting a million videos to do pranks on people, I mean, a million views to pull pranks on people, and then when you have powerful businesses like this, it, you know what I mean? Right. I mean, nonsense, man. People putting dog food in people's cereal and they get <laughs> thinking billions of views for that. <laughs> because we're living, because yeah. we're living underneath our, um, uh, our intelligence. That's why mm-hmm. we're living. We're taught to live underneath our intelligence. Like, you know, I don't want to go too deep into it, but if we start, if we start thinking with our free mind, like a real free right. mind, that's dangerous. Right. And oh, you know, right. that's very dangerous, and it and it threatens some, you know, entities and people and stuff like that. So that's why they keep pushing all those GMO foods and, and things like that. They have to. Keep your mind at a low level frequency. Yeah, it's like I'm since when? Since way. when? Since you when know? does a GMO even exist? Like I never even knew a GMO right. existed. But it's true See? though; they are yeah. gen. They do do it where there's a machine and where there's ele- um oh not not ele- not electronics, but where there is um AI and all that other stuff. They will be oh, mass producing everything. You right. know, it's too much Insta. You want food? We'll okay. do it quick. Mm-mm. Yep. So I tell people don't buy food without seeds Yeah. No? Yeah. We without had that. Com- I had that Not conversation real. with a few people. Yep. Mm-hmm. Yeah. But it's but right. I also heard because I started taking herbs the other day. I also okay. heard um, the guy was telling me that they are now injecting the seed. Mm-hmm. So they even if even if it's seeded, it still has a GMO in there. Wow, they found a way to do that. Yes, and it's stuff that I people, know. they're not telling you this, but, you know, it's always good to detox and cleanse your system every oh. so often or frequently. That way, like, right. you know, whatever whatever you couldn't avoid, you know, entering right. your system, you've already circulated and cleaned it out with natural True. herbs. So. True. You know, it, it that's what I've been hearing and it's like, you know, we just wow. have to we wow. have to we have to be we have to educate ourselves on everything. We do. We absolutely know? do. Because that that ties into our spiritual you know, I don't know why a lot of folks don't believe that what they consume naturally impacts the spiritual. It's true. I was going to say that earlier when you were talking about the kids and the depression. I was like, it's probably the food. I really wanted to say that. Yep. 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 Uh, Yeah, absolutely. And think about how, and think about how those animals are being raised. Are they happy? Like, are they, are they free ranging around like chipper, you know, animals, but, or, or, or are they stressed out in the cages and just yep. constantly being pumped with stuff and they're not free to walk around. Like, this is what we're ingesting, okay? That's right. That's what you're consuming. That's exactly right. Yeah. Whatever state they were in, when they died, that's what you're Mm-hmm. You know. I mean, think about it. That's why they have different grades of food. Different animals are raised different ways. It's true. You know, a regular bird... 99 cents. A Wagyu burger, $500, $300, $120. Uh-huh. <laughs> because the beef is raised totally different. Yeah. It was actually raised to, it probably took years for that, you know, the natural exactly. years for the, 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 the beef to grow. Mm-hmm. Like even in mm-hmm. when you go to like the Caribbean or out of the States, their animals right. are like a lot thinner because that's they, just how they are. If they're vegetarian, they're not going to be fat. Like think about yeah. it. If you're only feeding cows grass mm-hmm. all day long, how in the world are they getting fat? And they show us these beefy, beefy cows on on advertisements like that's like that's the way they're supposed to be on 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 grain and um on grain and grass. That's not possible. 
<laughs> so yeah, exactly. you, it doesn't make it does not make sense. <laughs> yeah, yeah, you know. So I tell you, you gotta watch what you eat. It's literally that's that has to be taken literally. Mm-hmm. They say watch what you eat. You know. I mean, it's so many things, so many tricks that they pull on society. Like even down to some of the fast food restaurants where if you go past some of them, now you know Burger King doesn't cook with real, real beef. Mm. But they have something at the top of the building that shoots off smoke. Oh, okay. And Make it seem like they're grilling. Yeah. Yep. Draw people in. Mm. You know that's not real beef. You're not going to sell real, real beef for 99 cents that big. That's true. Mm. They're, they're, they're mass produced like that? It's true. Uh, it's true. Uh-huh. Like it makes sense yeah. when you actually sit down and talk about it. It makes sense, yeah. but when you're in the yeah. moment, you're not thinking about that. Right? Yeah, they're not ninety-nine cents burger, and the thing is three pounds. There's only nine. <laughs> what is it? <laughs> you know? Yeah. Well, anyway, I think we definitely have to pick up another day. Um, oh yeah. But Absolutely. I'm gonna. If you can um, inbox me um, your email address and all that stuff, I'm going to put it in all of the the comment section of the YouTube. So if anybody scrolls down and sees, you know, different items, they can always click on that. Um, And hopefully it'll it'll encourage people to be more aware of what's going on in society as far as, um, you know, what you do with human rights and justice and stuff like that. Right. Well, I'm, if you can say with me, if you want, I, I don't know if it's too feminine for you, but I'm signing off and I want to say, see you guys again for another episode of Hello World. Oh, yeah. Absolutely. <laughs> Thank you, Corey. And um, you guys okay. have a great evening. Enjoy the rest of your week. I hope your weekend is even better. And we'll see you tomorrow. Absolutely. <laughs>